lot of times people will comment on my videos asking me hey can i use a particular commander at 5511 or at 5515 or something like that and so today i'm going to do something that i don't think i've ever done before and that is i'm going to go through literally every single legendary commander in the game and i'm going to give you guys my thoughts on what i think is kind of the minimum viable skill distribution to use them in open field pvp combat here in rise of kingdoms this video might be a little bit long so go ahead and grab a drink and of course what's going on guys cheers quick update on just two things first of all about 69 percent of you guys are not subscribed so consider subscribing and clicking the thumbs up button while you're down there and secondly i just purchased the most expensive computer that i've ever owned it's actually kind of scary and i just posted an unboxing video of it on my second channel the link to that video and my second channel will be in the description below i would really appreciate it if you guys check out the second channel and here's the deal if that video makes you laugh you have to subscribe to the second channel now let me just clarify what the point of this video is okay the point here is to give you guys a minimum viable builds that you could potentially use in the open field it is not to tell you where to stop unless i explicitly say stop the commander at this point then what i'm really telling you is that this is the minimum that you could consider using them in the open field at okay because every time i make a video like this somebody's like um actually the expertise version is much better it's like yes because it's expertise it's better because it has more like of course of course of course it's better so if you want the if you want the truth the truth is that all commanders at expertise are better than non-expertise commanders duh like of course that is obvious right so that th there's no point making a video like that the point is to get the most value out of the least amount of sculptures because sculptures are rare and they're hard to come by so for example i think everyone should expertise cpo prime but there's still some configurations before then that could potentially give you more value than others so for example would you rather 5155 or 5551 like there's different builds that you could have and so this video is to give you sort of the minimum that i would recommend for all the commanders knowing full well that obviously the expertise version is better of course of course anyway hopefully that clears up any confusion here let's jump right into the video and I'm going to start off with the leadership commander so there's going to be chapters down below if you care specifically about cavalry or infantry or whatever use the chapters to jump ahead but let's start here with Mehmed now of course Mehmed is a great free to play legendary because well you get him from the gold keys you can start getting those sculptures earlier on in the game and he's a generic AoE damage dealer and I think at 5511 that's going to be sort of the minimum that I would recommend using him in the open field and of course if you're in season of conquest I would recommend getting the relic for him you can get a really solid universal secondary legendary commander with a ton of health attack and skill damage and if you get lucky 5515 would be even better the expertise really doesn't move the needle that much moving on to ethel fled this one is kind of not really worth covering because everybody's going to expertise her eventually for free but I guess you could say that you could use her at 5511. I mean, it's kind of, again, pointless that everyone's going to have her expertise eventually. The main thing that she's going to do in the late game is debuff anyway. And so that first skill is what matters the most. But of course, taking less counterattack damage is decent. Next up is Trajan. And I feel like Trajan is kind of a whale's choice. I feel like most free to play players, most players are just not going to be using Trajan. Okay. He serves a relatively niche role and you get the most benefit out of that role by running seven armies in the open field. And so right away, like we've, we've reduced the number of people even thinking or talking about Trajan to almost zero but let's say you were going to consider using him as like a lower mid spender for like your sunset cannon or something then you could do five 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 one and i think that that is a good budget build but realistically like you probably eventually want to get the expertise here the stacking defense on the fourth skill is really going to be nice in those longer engagements especially because his active skill makes him take more damage which is like that sucks okay so i'm really leaning towards expertise here on this one especially because the expertise is quite good but again if you just cared about like sunset cannon for example i would say five 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 one is probably okay next up is frederick and i'm gonna be honest with you guys i don't think you should use freddy in pvp unless you're a whale and unless this is expertise I, I feel like there is no minimum usable area for freddy because the active skill here says you have an eight without the expertise is an 80 percent chance to deal damage so you might not even deal damage with him unless he's expertise which is like crazy and i know that the probability of that is pretty low but still like you need the guaranteed chance here in my opinion to even think about using freddy as a pvp commander if we're talking about pve like using him for barb chaining and things like that i would say 5511 is really nice i mean really you don't need to max the second skill maybe 5311 or something like that would be okay but the healing factor here is really nice in the open field when you're fighting those barbs so yeah, the second skill matters way more than the than the third or fourth caesar shouldn't really be used for pvp either but if you were going to do that i would say five five one one would be like the lowest minimum viable use for him 
the expertise isn't really great it just gives you a 400 damage factor on top of the massive buff that he has here which is nice the second skill makes you take less damage and I think that that is pretty important especially for a commander that's not really doing that much but just to be clear if you're going to use either of these commanders in PvP no matter what the skill distribution is you should have their relic okay the relic is very good for Caesar and it is mandatory if you're going to use them in PvP even at 5511 Isun Sin is a garrison commander and you really are not going to be using him in open field PvP at all so if you're considering getting Isun Sin you need the expertise Ragnar is kind of the same story as Caesar in that you you really wouldn't use him as in PvP but if you did it would be 5511 the third skill doesn't do anything in open field combat the fourth skill gives you more troops which is nice but you know you don't really need that if you wanted to use him and of course you do absolutely need his double relic if you were going to consider at all doing anything with him in the open field who's is not a commander that pretty much anybody should be investing in right now unless the meta changes over the next 12 months but she's in the same boat as Isun Sin in that if you are going to get her then you need her expertise to use her for garrison as a matter of fact that is also the case for Theodora and for Charlemagne and of course all new players can't even get their hands on Lu Bu you should never be using Lu Bu it literally doesn't it doesn't move the needle at all this does nothing even if you wanted to it would be like five five one five one or something like that and that distribution is just awful as it is so yeah Moctezuma is literally a PVE commander he is actually built for peacekeeping and so you will not be using him for PvP at all so he doesn't really fit into this video at all really don't invest in Moctezuma no matter who's watching don't get him and if you were going to use him for PvP he would have to be expertise and even still don't do it please don't do it definitely do not do it Honda's a really interesting case here because you're really if you're going to use him as a secondary then you would have to guarantee that he's better than your other choices like Mehmed who is literally free to play and in order to do that you would have to expertise him I think even at expertise him and Mehmed are very similar in this regard of course you have the slowdown on Honda and you know there's a couple other nuances here but I mean I guess you could argue 5515 would be an okay cheaper investment to use Honda but again if you're investing in him at all then first of all I think his time is kind of past but you probably want to go towards the expertise it's going to just give him more damage reduction on the third skill and of course he's going to be a little bit tankier as well I wouldn't really recommend a partial investment in him honestly Heraclius is kind of like the other garrison commanders although I do think you could make the argument that a 5551 would be something you could use in the open field if you didn't care about how slow he's going to be which that's kind of a fantasy right like most people care about their march speed unless maybe you're playing on defense or something like that but his active skill is a 1200 damage factor five target AOE with a shield his second skill gives him 30 percent health in the field his third skill gives you 20 percent skill damage and another shield and then the third skill is only for garrisons anyway so you don't need this so 5551 would be the cheapest but again feels more like a garrison investment to me I don't typically see people running this in the open field unless they're maybe barb chaining with it in which case you would just want the first skill to five I guess and then just unlock the rest it's the cheapest you could do Hannibal Barca is a pay to win commander so if you're gonna buy him you're just gonna max him out but the truth is you should not be buying him so that's that Suleiman's minimum investment for open field PvP would be 5515 but Suleiman is such a bad commander that you should not be investing in him at all it is not worth it so please don't there are four integration commanders here which I guess we'll cover really quick of course Mulan mainly Queen of Sunset Canyon potentially Ark of Osiris as well she's buffing Queen support Queen she does all that great but to get the best benefit out of that you want an expertise of course you could do five five one five or five five one one until you get the last skill to five but if you do plan on using her as support in the open field then you definitely need to get her relic okay and let's say in Canyon I would say maybe five five one five is what I would recommend I guess you could go a little bit lower on this last one but just the fact that you're not gonna have the most uptime on the active skill until she's expertise really makes me feel like you want the 5515 and then of course the other integration commanders here are all gathering commanders of course Cleopatra her second skill is most important here and then of course you want the expertise Sundyuk is definitely more important of a gatherer than any of the others because her expertise is so good and her second skill is also great and for Ashida you're also looking for his second skill as well now we're going to move on to cavalry and we're going to start of course with Cao Cao and really the minimum investment for him um he does doesn't really age in the season of conquest that well 
but you could do five one five one and that would be pretty cheap of course you would need the double relic as well ideally you would want five one five five or expertise the relic is going to bump up his skill damage and also give him some health as well which he desperately needs but no matter how he's skilled out he's still probably not going to be that great in season of conquest but let's say we're talking about season one of kvk or maybe season two kvk open field five one five one or better five one five five then you're good to go for Minamoto, he's also a pay to win commander like Barga, but he actually is usable, which is the difference. And I would say 5511 is a really, really valuable low investment for Minamoto. The third skill is just for PVE content, so you don't care about it that much. And the fourth skill does have a really nice debuff, but you still get an okay debuff here just by unlocking this with a 10% damage taken increase. So 5511 is very cheap. I think it's 27 or 30 us dollars and then of course you get the double relic on him which gives him a ton of stats on top of the 20 percent attack he already has and at that point he's actually pretty good for most players i wouldn't really recommend taking him past 5511 unless you really wanted the slight bump in damage on the expertise moving on to saladin everyone knows that 5551 is basically the stopping point for him that's what we have on my saladin here as well the fourth skill is just for hitting cities and you're really not going to be doing that with saladin unless you're a giga whale in kvk2 anyway so yeah you don't need the expertise it's a very minor bump in in what he does and uh it's very cheap at 5551 and very controllable as well which is nice just like Saladin, William is great at 5551. Five, the last skill really just get, increases the amount of defense that is given to you and your allies from 10 to 20 percent. It, I mean, you get half the value out of this just by unlocking it. And of course, the expertise does give you a little bit more attack and damage factor, which is nice. But again, when you consider how many sculptures it takes for that last skill, I don't really think it's worth it for most players. Um, I went ahead and did the expertise on him because I do, I, I didn't really have anything else to spend my sculptures on, to be honest with you guys. And I do feel like it moved the needle for my William and will future proof him a little bit better than a 5551. But again, for most players, 5551 is a really great value for him. When it comes to Nevsky, you can use him at 5511 when you first get into Season of Conquest. Of course, you want to expertise him eventually. I would go as far as to say, though, 5515 would actually be even better, of course course but when I look at the last two skills which one is better between these two you're asking the question do you want 10 percent more defense and more damage that you deal when surrounded which to me is not that great of a benefit because if you're watching this video the probability that you're a free-to-play player or a low spender is pretty high and in those cases if you're surrounded you should probably be retreating anyway so I don't really put that much value on the second half of this skill but the fourth skill bumps your skill damage bonus up from five to 25 percent so by maxing this skill you get 20 percent more skill damage by maxing this skill you get 10 percent more defense and then of course there's the second half where your secondary commander is going to deal 20 percent additional skill damage as well i think the fourth skill is better on nevsky than the third skill of course you can't guaranteed get the fourth skill right so by doing five five one one and then unlocking both of those skills wherever the points land they land i don't think it's worth doing a skill reset on him or anything because you should expertise him eventually five five one five i'd like a lot five five one one is minimum but eventually you'll expertise him. moving on to joan of arc 5115 is definitely the minimum viable for Joan of Arc Prime because the last skill gives you a 100% chance of double casting, plus you get some health here, which is nice. And the double cast on Joan is really what makes her great. Up from there, 5515 is also really solid, and I don't think anyone should really go past that, to be honest with you. Third skill is not that great, expertise is not that great. For most people, 5115 will be great. If you just want a little bit extra out of her, 5515 is also good. Huo is super weird because I feel like when you start to take apart the third and fourth skill, you're really asking the question, do you want to micromanage him as an army or not? I think if you are going to pay close attention to how much time he's been on the field and getting the benefit out of this third skill, then the minimum use case for him would be 5551. I think the third skill is great, reducing the rage cost especially for your first cast it's going to make sure you hit first and that is really important when your damage factor is so through the roof and you have a great slowdown if you're not going to be micromanaging the huo though i really kind of like the fourth skill better because it's giving you a um, 20 if it's not expertise 20 percent skill damage 30 percent defense i think that's really solid for open field fighting i mean those are really good 
for cavalry because it gives him such a great distribution of stats between massive attack on the second skill massive defense on the fourth skill and then massive health from all of the equipment that you're bringing the distribution on his stats is just so premium I love it it's actually perfect so I'm kind of torn what you could do is five five one one and then unlock these last two and wherever your next four skill drops go there they go I would not recommend using any skill resets on Huo eventually you'll probably expertise him if you're investing in, in him anyway so it really comes down to whether you want five 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 one or five five one five I think you could easily make an argument for either especially because the third skill is very temporary and afterwards you get a really mundane kind of boring buff compared to massive defense and skill damage moving on to Genghis Khan nobody should be using him in the open field ever for any reason basically unless you're in KVK2 if you use him outside of KVK2 first of all you need the relic second of all he's got to be expertise he has to be there's just the skill distribution here is just garbage everything about his kit is trash a lot of these skills are conditional based on amount of units remaining for both of these so when one's an effect the other one's not his kit sucks you definitely need the chance of double casting if you ever are going to consider using him but don't consider using him moving on to Zhang Yu 5515 is a really great distribution for Zhang Yu the third skill is just for attacking cities or strongholds so you don't really need this at all but you you do get a bunch of attack and you also get stacking damage over time which is nice and his expertise is okay but he's also such an old commander at this point that I would not recommend people really expertise him right that would be like oh expertise Guan Yu like you're probably not going to do that these days same thing with Zhang Yu I don't think it's worth it it's very expensive for an old commander so five five one five if you were going to do anything I would leave him there moving on to Attila I feel like he kind of has to be expertise guys I mean the expertise is great you can't be silenced and you deal 20% more normal damage with uh, to troops that have less than 50% remaining. I love that a lot. The second skill here, unfortunately, is only for fighting uh, cities or strongholds. You could make the argument that you would do 5155, five, five, but that distribution, as we know from Guan Yu, is very difficult to obtain. So really, it, it's kind of hard to get that distribution anyway. And I think if you are investing in Attila at this point, you probably want him expertise. But I mean, hey, if you get his first skill to five you unlock the rest and you get really lucky with five one five five i guess you could try it however i don't really know that many people doing that cicada is interesting because his best synergy is with attila so really you're probably not going to invest in him unless you have attila and if you're going to do that you're probably going to expertise both of them however that could change moving forward in this year if we do see a cavalry commander with smite damage maybe Takeda will have another commander he could potentially pair with and in that case I would say probably five 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 one would be the minimum that you could use here of course the fourth skill is relatively tanky but the third and second skills here give you so many stats it's crazy you get 40 percent cavalry attack and 40 percent cavalry defense plus a healing factor here which is is really it's quite nice okay it's 150 per second for four seconds so that's actually a 600 healing factor which is almost as good as Boudicca Prime's for healing factor as well but the stats on Takeda are just so good I mean so many stats here again most people shouldn't really be investing in him and his expertise is quite good and if you were to use him with a smite damage commander you probably will want to get this but yeah, I guess you could argue 5551 would be minimum technically. Chandragupta has a really awful skill distribution here because first of all, the second skill is the rally skill, which means skipping this is very hard. Third of all, his damage factor is extremely low unless you get the expertise because it bumps up his stacks maximum from three to four, which means his damage factor goes from 1500 to 2000. So really like you kind of want an expertise here. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the unfortunate truth about Chandragupta. So most people probably aren't going to be using him, but I feel like if you did you kind of want the expertise yeah Viga it's kind of in the opposite boat here where you probably will never use her in the field and the only reason you would get her is to garrison and if that's the case you need the expertise that's kind of the same thing with Ian Ziska as well moving on to Justinian I would argue his minimum investment is five 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 one if you're going to use him in just the open field unfortunately there is some rally portion to a, a lot of his skills actually which is kind of a bummer obviously the second skill no but the third skill yes the reason that I like the third skill is because you just get 50 15 percent more cavalry health when you max this out and you can't guarantee getting points in the last skill anyway plus cavalry attack here from two to ten percent not that meaningful the bonus damage against surrounded targets you know that does that is actually quite nice and I wish we could do that if you got into like let's say five five one five I don't think that would be the end of the world either because you do get a lot of bonus damage when surrounded when you're hitting surrounded targets here but remember you're not going to get the bonus effect of the calculating things because it's that only works this only works in a rally right if target is surrounded add three troops when calculated effects this is only for rally attacks and so therefore you're not going to get the, the maximum here unless the target is actually actually surrounded by up to five troops which they could very well be in which case you would like this skill to be maxed but also as a cooldown I don't know I'm sticking with five 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 one here uh but I could see the argument for flipping this round if you got unlucky
moving on to Bert he is a conquering commander so he's just for rallies he's kind of outclassed at this point especially by Justinian and so you probably won't ever invest in him or use him in the open field similar to Yadiga or Yanziska so there really is no minimum here you probably would expertise him honestly I guess you could make the argument that it would be five five one five but again nobody should really be doing that in my opinion you're dealing damage over time and that's historically been quite bad in the open field okay let's move on to Constantine and of course this commander shouldn't be used in the open fields um he is a decent support and with his relic in the game and with Gorgo being bringing him back to Garrison meta kind of then you know it's okay but for open field 5511 is the minimum I think you shouldn't use him for field really he is a Sunset Canyon superstar and in that case 5511 or if you do continue to get more sculptures of him from things like the uh, opening the legendary chest here or maybe from getting the commander choice chest from the Lucerne Scrolls 5515 is actually quite good for Sunset Canyon because that big heal is going to help you out a ton and the skill damage taken reduction if you are using or getting shield somehow moving on to Richard I would say that the minimum investment for him is 5111 we've talked about this in many videos and you're not going to be using Richard for PvP unless you're a mega whale in KVK one in which case you're going to expertise him but I do not think that that is worth it maybe you would even do 5551 and just leave him there even if you're a whale maybe you would leave him there because like I don't know this last skill doesn't really move the needle that much and the expertise is not that great either I know the slowdown is cool but there's lots of slowdowns in the game now so I don't really think that that really moves the needle five one 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 you're not gonna use him for PvP and you will potentially use him for Sunset Canyon and things like that also chaining barbarians he's quite good for that still so you you know you might consider doing that next is Charles Martel five five one one is a great uh point to start using Charles Martel I think the second skill gives you uh I think 30 percent of stats when he's not expertise unfortunately no March speed unless he is expertise but still 30 percent of infantry stats being defense and health that's very tanky very good first skill gives you a nice damage bonus for a long period of time and the fourth skill just by unlocking it's going to give you more 10 percent counterattack damage of course you will get him for free over time so five five one five would be even better but five five one one is completely under control and very very solid Alexander the Great is another one of those commanders where you really want to expertise him because the the, the bonus here on his expertise three enemy troops take 30 percent more damage for four seconds that is a very very good supportive addition to his active skill if you wanted to do less than expertise it would be five 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 one but I do not really recommend that I think maybe if your Alex right now at the time of watching this is five 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 one and you are wondering should you expertise in the answer is probably no it's 2024 you probably don't need Alex at this point there's lots of other better commanders the Uche with CPO is a great example or I guess it would be CPO the Uche for the best infantry army in the game Alex is not a part of that anymore um, I did make a video recently talking about how Alexander can be still used very very effectively and I like that a lot but I really do like the expertise here. You just get a ton of stats from everything plus the bonus. I like that. If you use him, you probably want to expertise. The great thing about Guan Yu is that 5155 is where you can stop with him. You do not need the expertise at all. You definitely don't need it. I promise you. The second skill is for rallying cities or strongholds. You don't need that. And in fact, I kind of regret expertising my Guan Yu. It was a lot of extra sculptures. I just wanted to squeeze as much value out of him as possible. I don't think it was worth it. Keep him at 5155. That's going to be perfect. Harold is also a pretty outdated commander at this point you could consider doing 5155 for him but that's such a risky investment for such a low tier commander when you talk about that investment for Guan Yu for example you're trying to get that configuration on what is otherwise a very powerful commander for Harold trying to get a 5155 the payoff is much lower for the same risk right you're getting a you're getting a Harold which is not that great he does lower his own defense and suspend that or is immune to that for three seconds whenever he casts his active skill he will cast it quite frequently because of this fourth skill as well but at the end of the day I don't love Harold anymore I know I know it sucks I think his design is awesome 5155 is the minimum but really if you did use him these days at all you probably would want the expertise I guess Zenobia is a garrison commander so just like all garrison commanders you would want her expertise CPO is a really interesting choice here I think 5551 is actually a pretty cheap investment for CPO I think that's a great choice of course if you just get into season of conquest and you're really low on sculptures you could leave them at 5511 you could still use them at that point I think you're still getting a decent amount of health and damage factor from the third skill at one 
and of course the last skill at one as well so five five one one is nice but five 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 one is even better because then you get the most amount of health the most amount of damage factor here and the thing about the fourth skill is that it's actually quite good but half the time it's not going to do anything right if you take skill damage it has a 50 percent chance too and therefore whether the skills at one or five it's going to do nothing half the time and so at that point like would you really want to upgrade this maybe maybe not i think if you kind of average it out then you could look at this as 15 percent skill damage taken reduction and a 250 damage factor shield which i mean i don't know about you but i would probably rather just have the constant health buff i will say though however you probably want to expertise him i really like the 10 percent more skill damage here especially because all of his skills do do something in the open field Tarek is a great example of why i'm even making this video and that's because i think 5515 Tarek is great i used him in my most recent kvk he performed really well behind liu che i love that he gets 15 percent more damage that's great and 10% chance for a massive rage reduction here, which is nice. He gets a little bit of March speed out of territory. He gets some uh, really powerful single, single target damage. I think he'll probably be power crept out of the game very, very soon. And in fact, a lot of people are using Gorgo now instead of Tarek, which makes a lot of sense. I think Gorgo's rage requirement being lower is amazing. So probably not worth an investment these days, but 5515, you can leave him there and you feel good about that. Sargon's minimum investment is actually kind of interesting. It's 5550, which is very unique. You don't even want to unlock this last game unless in my opinion you're going to expertise him i think if you're taking him that far you might as well expertise him but if you're not going to expertise him that means that you're going to probably not unlock this last skill because let's say you do five 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 one that means you're going to remove the stacks of the auto effect for a 500 damage factor which is just not worth it you would rather just leave the stacks on there so the target takes more skill damage it's way more beneficial to leave them there and these days there's a lot fewer sargons in the open field to remove odd stacks and so if you're the only one with the sargon and you're never removing the odd stacks then 5550 is nice although that does mean he has to be the secondary commander so keep that in mind i actually don't hate the 5550 sargon you're getting march speed you're getting infantry damage you're getting a uh, a bunch of attacks and health and the single target damage if you can stick to the target it's 2500 it's it's pretty solid if you pair him with with uh liu che it could be 3k it could be 3500 if you're insanely lucky right so 5550 is minimum or expertise moving on to liu che this is another scenario sort of like cvo prime where you probably will want to expertise him eventually but if we're talking about actual minimums then 5515 i recommend the most if you look at the third and fourth skill the difference between these two when it comes to actual like performance in the open field it's almost negligible i think they're very similar skills in terms of how it's going to break down in the battle report of course 5551 is guaranteed you can get that with skill lock so if you don't want any randomness you can just do that i like the fourth skill more to be honest with you guys so yeah but you can't guarantee it right so you know you can just unlock the last two skills where the skills fall the skills fall and eventually you're going to expertise them anyway so it probably shouldn't matter chook is also very outdated at this point most players should not be using him but if you were to use him you you need the expertise unfortunately this is what gives you an extra an extra bump in damage with the uh, aoe here and you kind of need it everything else here is just it's not a complete kit really unless you have all of his skills which is kind of a bummer that makes him a very expensive investment and there's no cheap alternative McCall is a rallying commander and you probably shouldn't be using him in the open field unless he's expertise i know that's kind of a bummer but like the expertise here the reason that this is so good is because you would pair him with your herald and every time Harold casts his active skill, which he's going to do a lot more because of his fourth skill, then you're going to get this nice bonus. So you kind of need an expertise to use him in the field these days. You could argue five, five, one, five, but at that point, I just don't think it's worth it. Just expertise or nothing ideally nothing leonidas is another one of those commanders that is just super outclassed these days but if you wanted a cheap build you could do five five one one a lot of players used to use that behind a guan yu or you know as a secondary in sunset canyon as just a sort of tanky secondary because you do get 30 percent defense here you get 30 percent health on the active skill but just don't use leonidas these days moving on to pyrus this is a gold key commander right so if you're going to use him you're going to want that double relic of course the only people that should be expertising him are probably giga whales and kvk1 but beyond that i'd say 5511 is a decent beginning point here because you do get the health and the march speed and the normal damage bonus on the second skill very very good second skill here to be honest with you guys the third skill is not that impressive to me but the fourth skill is so 5515 I think is even better but minimum would be 5511. Gorgo's in a similar boat as Tarek from before because she is I mean she's a garrison commander so really you should be investing in her if you're a garrison player and if that's the case you expertise her but you could make the argument that 5515 is something that you could use in the open field because this is going to give you the maximum amount 
of normal damage on the fourth skill the third skill is just for serving garrison so you don't even need that in the field second skill is going to give you a ton of attack and also a 10 percent chance for more normal damage which is nice and the active skill is really kind of where she shines because it has a lower rage requirement anyway so five five one five would be the minimum for gorgo and then finally we have flavius and flavius is a garrison commander that you basically need expertise and you're probably not gonna use him in the open field these days anyway moving on to archers we're gonna start with isong Ye, of course and this is a commander that you pretty much need to expertise it's kind of unfortunate and i will go out and say that like let's say you casually were spinning the wheel for ysg in the early game and you just never expertise him and at this point it's kind of too late to do that if he's five five one five you probably could just leave him alone i mean you know obviously you want the circle that's that's what he's known for and this does give you a nice bump in skill damage right so you know this the expertise does two things one it increases the probability of hitting more targets and it also increases the damage to each target so there's a lot to love about the expertise here it does more than you think but 5515 does give you a lot um a fan shaped aoe like you know the fact that it non-expertise the fact that it's a fan people always think for ysg that that's trash yet they ignore the fact that literally every other commander like basically does some form of fan i know herman is kind of an exception here but like a lot of other aoe commanders it's always a fan and we never talk smack about those fans but for some reason we talk smack about ysg's fan again the truth is you want him expertise you want the double relic on him okay but i mean 5515 i guess you could try it if you have like I, I guess i guess but don't moving on to nebu we have five five one five i actually you could see that's my configuration here i used this for a very long time and it actually served me very very well the second skill is just nice tanky stats and universal march speed active skill is a five target 1500 aoe which is solid fourth skill gives you 15 percent more damage this looks very familiar for Tarek, for example right which we really like this the expertise just doesn't really move the needle it gives you 500 more damage factor to one target which is okay but it's very expensive the third skill you don't need moving on to Boudica 5551 is where I would recommend most people stop I think the expertise you know obviously there's an 80 percent chance of negating silences like you know things like silence and control effects that's nice but for the massive amount of uh, that it costs to get the healing factor here and the expertise I don't know if it's really worth it I don't think it really moves the needle that much especially because if you're using Boudica you're probably pairing her with Juge Leong still right that's like her best pairing in my opinion and so if you're doing that then Juge Leong is going to be removing the silences half the time and in that case you really don't need the expertise here so 5551 is probably where I would recommend stopping for Boudica Prime moving on to Juge Leong I think the absolute minimum investment for him is 5511 that is like the bare minimum and if you get a 5511 you're gonna have a better version of YSG basically even if YSG is expertise having a 5511 Juge Leong is gonna be as good or better than him which is kind of sad but that is that is the reality here the active skill is just so powerful and then the truth is that the fourth skill is definitely better than the third skill but you're only going to notice that once he's expertise or you're going to notice it even more because you start with the marquee effect and so you really do want to expertise Juge Leong you're going to notice uh, he performs much better as expertise so yeah five five one one and then probably expertise him from there Herman Prime is the new kid on the block 5551 is a minimum investment for him I think getting this last skill to five which I did recently do because I knew that I would be using Herman Prime probably for a while with Juge Leong the last skill just makes him a little bit more tanky and you deal slightly more damage when you bring it to five but at the end of the day the reason that you would max him is for the double cast of the expertise which isn't going to happen that often to be honest with you guys it's going to be relatively slow unless you pair him with Tamiris, which you should not be so really what i'm trying to say is 5551 is the minimum but there is some justification to the expertise else is interesting in the fact that all of his skills are very mid i would say you probably want 5551 as a minimum investment for him which kind of sucks but it is what it is or maybe like 5151 i guess uh, i like the instant proc damage here a lot to be honest with you so i still would probably lean towards 5551 but really you shouldn't be using him in the field anymore anyway and if you do you need the double relic for sure but Moses is another commander that you probably shouldn't be using in the open field anymore but if you were to do that I would say 5551 is a really cheap investment arguably even 5511 would be even cheaper I guess but I really like 5551 because it does give you some defense and you have a 10 percent chance to apply a really powerful skill damage taken debuff to the target and I like that a lot especially because in the early game there's not that many options to do that besides with the so 5551 I would say is is solid but he's a gold key commander so I mean you're gonna get him I guess over time slowly as you can see mine isn't even close to done and I've been getting him for free for a while so 
yeah kind of bad timing there for Thutmose the minimum for Tamiris I would say is 5115 I really like the fact that her probability goes up to 100 percent on the fourth skill for the poison stacks which is good and really you do not need the second skill at all obviously because it's only for attacking a city not even a stronghold just cities which is wild uh the third skill is okay but I mean the sculptures is just not worth it you're only gonna ever use her to debuff the target with poison that's the only role she ever really plays outside of kvk2 so 5115 or even like even 1115 honestly like if you just wanted the poison you could you could try that but like the probability of that is almost zero is really low so yeah i would say 5115 is your best bet next up is Ramses and he's kind of outclassed by a lot of different commanders at these these days so probably want to use the the expertise here if you're going to use in the open field minimum viable would be five 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 one I guess I really like the fact that he takes 30 percent less skill damage here on the third skill I think that's really solid so you probably would want to pick that up plus the bonus to attack and March speed I mean you already have a ton of attack here but the extra March speed is going to be really nice because it's when you're hit with a basic attack so if you're trying to run away just instantly popping 40 percent bonus March speed is crazy but like do you really want stats to run away like that's kind of a, that's kind of lame right so if you're gonna use Ramses you probably want the expertise but if not five 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 one Edward of Woodstock is another example of a commander that you should never use ever pretty much I think at, at this point these days you probably have a better use for him as a secondary than you do as a primary that is really sad and if you're only gonna ever use him as a secondary you could argue that a five 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 zero would be the best secondary configuration for him besides expertise of course because the third skill at one removes 10 percent defense for 15 percent attack that trade-off in my opinion is not worth it for Edward I would say you'd probably have to get this to like three or higher to make unlocking the skill worth it and so if you're not going to do that I would leave it locked five 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 zero I guess would be a decent secondary for Edward but really like he kind of stinks man he kind of stinks I like the March speed I like the health I don't like the damage factor and his expertise still doesn't do what they say it does so I wonder when they're gonna fix that just don't use Edward okay don't use him Artemisia is up next and she's actually solid at five five one one especially if you pair her with Boudicca Prime secondary Artemisia with a Boudicca Prime primary is a really good value value build for her because it gives you the max damage for the aoe the maximum amount of tanky stats here and the third skill doesn't do anything in the field fourth skill hopefully will give you a 25 percent damage increase without the self silence because Boudicca will wipe it which is going to be really cool so you definitely do not need the expertise for her but unless you're pairing her with an expertise to Boudicca prime which we already talked about you probably shouldn't have unless you have the expertise Boudicca prime then you don't need the artemisia at all moving on to cyrus he's really interesting because you could technically make the argument that at five 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 one he is usable and i'm not going to argue against that but i feel like in these days because cyrus is so outclassed you almost kind of need the expertise to make him like viable to make him to even think about it right because he has a little bit of a rage engine here and he also gains a ton of stats for three seconds when he uses his, act his active skill which is otherwise a pretty weak active skill I mean the debuff is okay but the damage factor is very low and so like this actually makes his active skill kind of good and so like I kind of feel like in 2024 you kind of have to expertise Cyrus I feel like that's that's the truth but technically I guess minimum viable would be 5551 five, Gilgamesh is a rally commander that is definitely outclassed in the field these days so you probably shouldn't be using him at all 5515 five, I guess would be the minimum viable build but realistically he's so outclassed that you would kind of need him expertise if you even consider to use him at all which you probably shouldn't in the open field Manatore is very outclassed in the field these days so if you're going to get her she's a garrison commander you're probably gonna have her expertise but you don't just don't use her in the field these days just don't do it Henry is another one of those commanders where he actually can perform really well in the field and I feel like a lot of the reason that he does perform well in the field is because of his expertise which kind of is a bummer that makes him a very expensive investment not again not saying you can't use him in the field a lot of people do and he is very good but I feel like you need the expertise to use him in the field technically if you wanted a cheaper build it would be five five one five because this third skill doesn't do anything in the field anyway so I mean that's that but again I I I haven't personally invested in him at all and I think because he kind of needs that expertise to move the needle in the field I've heard people say Dido and I've heard people say Dido and I don't know which one it actually is so yeah the truth is she's a garrison commander you need her expertise and she's not going to be great in the open field to be honest with you and Asher Bonapal is also kind of in the same boat as Henry which sucks right because I like Asher Bonapal a lot his active skill deals a ton of damage but the buffs on his expertise are great now it is RNG 
but all these buffs are good right they're all good and it's for four seconds that's was, was all good man it's real good i guess technically you could argue five 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 one but like whew, man that's kind of risky i think if you're not gonna expertise him probably don't invest in him i might change my opinion on that later but for now that feels like the right play i guess we also have to talk about the engineering commanders there's two of them okay and this is like the most niche pair of commanders you could possibly invest in maybe this will completely change in the next month or two but as it stands right now if you're considering margaret or bobber then you're probably looking at an expertise for both of them i mean like they're just such a niche role that like i really like the expertise on bobber here it gives him a rage engine which i think you would want if you're doing range damage and i guess i guess you could argue a five five one one build for margaret i don't love her expertise to be honest with you and a lot of these things like yeah the defense reduction is nice but you still get a good one for just unlocking this the march speed reduction is what it is i mean man i just feel like if you're running ranged like you probably know what you're doing and like if you're going to invest any anything at all in any of this like let's just be real it's kind of garbage like every okay look every time I talk about ranged everyone's in the comments and they're like but Omni York, there's this one player in this one kingdom you should see the reports he gets oh my god this is so anecdotally good and like look I, I get that you can like mess around with engineering right and and I'm not saying that good reports don't exist you could get good reports with anybody in, in the right circumstances but let's not pretend like engineering is like a real thing like it's it's a kind it's something you could do it's an option but it's not a thing uh, you know what I'm saying anyway I think you guys get the point here if you invest in ranged you're you're kind of memeing and in that case just go all the way just just commit to the meme and that's going to be it guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video I really hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video most of you guys are not subscribed and you think you are so please consider clicking that button and comment down below what you think about my analysis of these commanders was this helpful for you was it not helpful for you if you're a new player maybe this gave you a little bit of an insight as to how I think about all these commanders unfortunately a lot of the older ones aren't super usable unless they're expertise which makes them very expensive so let me know what you think in the comments section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace